This video introduces the technique of trig substitution to evaluate integrals involving square root signs, like this one. There are a few trig identities that are especially useful for this technique. The first one's the Pythagorean identity, and the second is the related identity that involves tangent and secant. There's also a third related identity that involves cotangent and cosecant. This one could also be used in the method of trig substitution, although it doesn't come up as often as the first two. As our first example, let's look at the integral of x squared over the square root of 49 minus x squared. According to Wolfram Alpha, this integral evaluates to this expression involving a square root expression, kind of an ex as expected, and a sine inverse which just sort of come, seems to come out of the blue here. Let's see where this answer comes from using a trig substitution. The inverse sine function in the answer gives us a hint that we may want to substitute in something related to sine. I'm going to substitute in x equals 7 sine theta. If x is 7 sine theta, then dx is going to be 7 cosine theta d theta. Now I'll substitute in for x and dx in my integral to get the integral of 7 sine theta squared over the square root of 49 minus 7 sine theta squared times 7 cosine theta d theta. Let me simplify a little. I have a 7 cubed in the numerator times sine squared theta cosine theta. And the denominator I have 49 minus 49 sine squared theta. I'll factor out the 49 here. And since the square root of 49 is 7, I can pull a 7 out of the square root sign. Now here is where a little bit of magic occurs. I know that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity. And the square root of cosine squared theta is equal to cosine theta. Well, actually it's equal to the absolute value of cosine theta, which is the same thing as cosine theta if cosine theta is positive, or in other words, if theta is between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, for example. I would really like to replace my square root of 1 minus sine squared theta by just cosine theta, not the absolute value of cosine theta. So I'm just going to assume that theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 when I make my substitution. This might seem like cheating, but it's actually legit. Because if you think about the unit circle, as theta ranges from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, well, cosine is always positive like we want it to be, but sine is ranging all the way from negative 1 to 1, and so we can actually achieve all of the x values between negative 7 and 7 this way, which are the only x values in the domain of our function anyway. Now if we go back to our integral, we can actually replace the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta with a simple cosine theta. We've successfully gotten rid of this tricky square root sign, which is the whole point behind trig substitution. Now if we simplify, we just have to integrate 7 squared sine squared theta d theta. And this is a familiar problem that we can solve using another trig identity. Now we've got an integral we can compute. So the integral of 1 half is 1 half theta, and the integral of cosine of 2 theta is 1 half sine of 2 theta. So let me add my constant of integration, and I'm almost done, almost but not quite because this answer is in terms of theta, and my original problem was in terms of x. Now I know that x and theta are related according to this equation here. So if I solve for theta, 
I get sine theta is equal to x over 7, so theta is inverse sine or arc sine of x over 7. So I could just plug in for theta here and get 7 squared, that's 49 times 1 half sine inverse x over 7 minus 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth sine of 2 times sine inverse x over 7 plus c. This is a correct answer, but it's very awkward looking. Sine of twice sine inverse x over 7, there's got to be a way to simplify this. Unfortunately, we can't just pull the 2 out and cancel the sine with the sine inverse because, well, sine doesn't work that way. But instead, we can use the double angle formula. So we can rewrite sine of 2 theta as twice sine theta cosine theta. So let me ignore this line for now. And I'll rewrite the above line as 49 times 1 half theta minus 1 fourth times twice sine theta cosine theta plus c. Now there's one more trick we need to use, and that trick is to draw a right triangle. I'm going to label the sides of that triangle using the equation for the substitution we made, or this equivalent form is a little easier to use. So since sine theta is x over 7, if I label one of my angles as theta, then the opposite side needs to have a measure of x, and the hypotenuse should have a measure of 7. You can check that by the Pythagorean theorem, that means that this bottom side needs to have a measure of the square root of 49 minus x squared. Notice that that's exactly the same expression that was in our original integrand. Once we have the triangle labeled, we can use it to find expressions for sine of theta and cosine of theta in terms of x. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's x over 7. Well, we already knew that. But now cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's the square root of 49 minus x squared over 7. We can use these two equations to substitute in for sine theta and cosine theta, and to get rid of the, this naked theta here, we'll still have to use the fact that theta is inverse sine of x over 7. Those substitutions lead us to this answer, and a little bit of simplification leads us to the same answer that Wolfram Alpha gave us. This was a complicated problem, but the key step was to use this trig substitution, and then that allowed us to use a trig identity in order to rewrite our square root and get rid of the square root. After that, it was a fairly routine integration problem until we got to the point where we had to substitute back in for theta. And then drawing the right triangle helped us figure out what to do. In this video, we used trig substitution to evaluate an integral with a square root in it.